Cloutier, welcome to Star Foodies. Hey, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure, and did I say your name right? You did. Okay, wonderful. Because we were talking a little bit earlier, your mixed heritage. Tell mm -hmm. us about that. Uh, my father's side is French and German. On my mother's side is uh, Irish and, uh, and African American and um, way, way back as well, which my, my two kids have uh, big big hair it's and it's beautiful I love that yeah. and I love that I like talking about culture a lot on the show uh, because culture affects what we eat right so did you grow up eating more mom's type food more dad's type food my uh, my father has like a, a bit of an aversion to spice and I love spice so we didn't grow up with a ton of that so I discovered it like later in life so I was like 20 when I discovered like Indian food and fell in love and went this is amazing, but uh, there was a lot of interesting dishes, like from the French Canadian side. Yeah. And uh, my mother, like you know, always cooked amazing meals and everything. But I don't know if it's anything that's like you know fancy or noteworthy. But it was. Yeah. yeah. And do you like cooking for yourself, or do you prefer someone else to cook for you? I prefer someone else to cook for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind cooking though. I'm only good at a few things. Yeah. And uh, yeah. We're but, gonna reveal that at the end. We're right, gonna reveal good. Shane's secret recipe that. So after a commercial break, you know, I head to the kitchen with a chef and we're going to try and make your recipe for the audiences at home. But before we get more into the food talk, which is something we love to do here, let's talk about the music. All right. So you've got a new track coming out. Yeah, Rain Check. And, um, and it's uh, the video actually turned out really well for that song as well. I'm really happy with how it, how it went and yeah. it's, been, it's been doing well. It's only been out for a week or so. And uh, yeah, things are going well and it's a song that's it's um, fairly deep for me. It's a you know, so a lot of my music is like that. Um, where the last two albums have come from, um, it's been like a a revealing experience, a vulnerable experience. But ultimately, their their albums and the content is about perseverance. Sure. You know? And do you write all of your own music? I do. You don't want to buy anyone else's songs. No, no. I I've done um, a few covers that are available on iTunes, but they're kind of like you know extremely different. I did a, a cover of like How Soon Is Now by The Smiths, okay. Paranoid by Sabbath, and Ace of Spades by Motorhead. But I do them like acoustic versions, so just for fun. But all my albums are always original music. Yeah, yeah. like I uh, you mentioned acoustic. I totally love that. So you got me there <laughs> with the acoustic stuff. So uh, obviously we've been going through these. I'm going to say the new normal or like odd times and you mentioned something to me you had your first live performance just a while ago yeah this yeah. past weekend actually it was at uh, blue mountain village in uh, in collingwood and uh it was really interesting because it's outdoors they have to follow the rules and the staff there have been adapting and readapting constantly okay. amazing people um, and it was uh, so I had to play all instrumental so I was doing instrumental versions of my own songs you know not singing so um so when they asked me what I thought, sure, like, you know, we all have to kind of adapt and it's a new yeah. challenge and it was actually a lot of fun. I got to be creative on the spot while I'm playing and, and do things. And what it, was the audience re reaction like? Really great, actually. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't sure how, how that would go over, but they really yeah. liked it. And I think a lot of people are, are sensitive to that things have to be a little different than normal and, right. and people are pretty open and, and cool about it. So you mentioned Rain Check. Let's go back there because I actually love the title. Can you tell me a little bit about the inspiration behind that? Yeah. Uh, so Rain Check is, um, I had a, a, a tragedy in my life and, and Rain Check is about that, um, that spot you get to where it's difficult to move on sometimes. And especially, um, you know, and it, the song can mean something different to different people. This song for me was um, being able to move on in relationships you know, I think we carry a lot of baggage and, and luggage from our past and it's that point where you need to like take a deep breath and go, okay, I'm going to step forward. And that's what that song is. So Rain Check is, um, you know, it's, it's really about acknowledging where you are and where you need to get. Does it feel cathartic when you sing music like that, that has such deep meaning for you? It does, yeah. And, uh, and yeah, it, and that's all I've been doing uh, in the last... Uh, a couple of years I released my first album In Light and then Red Wagon and right. then Rain Check is the first single from the new record which will be released shortly. Right. Um, and that's what I do, I, I enjoy it and it, it is, it's good for me and I get comments from people, I get people writing me on social media saying hey this song resonates with me because, and sometimes it's not even the same reason I wrote it for, but I appreciate that and I like that. I'd rather them have their own connection to it. So important. It feels like, you know, you turn on a song on the radio or you ever, wherever you are and you're thinking like, hey, I can relate to that, but it has a different meaning for everybody. That must be such a like spectacular feeling for you to know you can touch so many people with one song. Yeah, it, it means a lot to me actually. 
And so I also read that red wagon. I read a little bit about that. So that came from a different place. So you're in a different place in your time. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, red. So um, in light came out just, you know, really soon after I, the tragedy of my life. And again, it's about perseverance and yeah. about like kind of getting up and dusting yourself off. Red wagon is as much a sequel as a prequel to that album. And I was in a better place. Um, the song Red Wagon is actually about, you know, we grew up with ideas of what we want to do when we're kids and we have dreams of who we want to be. And we have people that with all best intentions will say, well, you know, you should go, maybe you should go to school for this or maybe you should do this. And it's all good intentions, but sometimes it doesn't resonate with who we are. And so Red Wagon, the Red Wagon re um, represents you know, having all of your dreams and hanging on to them and keeping that with you God, and, that. <laughs> and, and following. So the video actually uh, for that, there's a little boy that um, from our area and he's so cute. He's supposed to represent me as a kid, like in pulling his red wagon. And he did so well. He was like a total little pro and uh, it was really great. So it was fun. So that's what the song is. That's know. so important and so inspiring. And I, I have to ask because I read about your t grade 12 teacher. Was <laughs> that, <laughs> and you're going to tell audiences at home about that. But I think we all have had a grade 12 type teacher like that, you know. So was that part of the inspiration for the song? You know what, I think so. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of different things. And I will yeah. say this, that, that teacher, he wasn't all bad, you know. Um, I think it's probably good that he said that to me. I have that personality where I have kind of a, you know, I can grit my teeth and ignore things. And sometimes it drives me harder. Um, you know, I did well in his class. In fact, before he said what he said, he had said, oh, you did so well. He goes, you know, but I don't see you being a musician for a living. It's not your thing, you know. And yeah. I don't think he meant to be rude sure. in a weird way, you know. I think, you know, but the way I took it is I was like, oh, yeah? So, yeah. It's so, like we've heard that. I know I've heard it a lot in my life. It comes from a spot where of good intention. Like, we don't recommend this because, you know, there's a lot of competition, for example, in this field and so on and so forth. But we have that in common where I would have done, the, and I have done the exact same thing. You use that as fuel. Right? Yeah, exactly. To, to move on. So uh, shortly after that, did you start writing your own music and singing, or were you always doing that growing up? I always wrote, um, believe it or not, at that time, though, I was more interested in, like, uh, being in a heavy metal band and doing that <laughs> kind of thing. And I played in a lot yeah. of uh, cover bands as well, you know, just making money and things like that. Yeah. Um, and that, I think I got a lot of experience from that. Um, I do wish I spent less time doing that before oh, okay. I really started to focus on my own work. Um, I think you can learn from it, but I think you can exhaust it as well. And um, That's very true. You know, so yeah, I've always written, um, but you know, you go through different phases as an artist and, and I just really feel the most comfortable doing the acoustic. Um, work that I've been doing and everything I, I do on these albums is all acoustic and uh, there's a each one has a different kind of flavor and slant to it. And Who do you like listening to these days? <laughs> I'd love to know. <laughs> I listen to everything from yeah. like um, John Mayer to Napalm Death to yeah. I love the Dead Kennedys. I love uh, my favorite blues artist is Buddy Guy. Um, I like everything and I, I kind of appreciate everything. My new my favorite new artist is Orville Peck. Um, which I don't like a ton of country music, to be honest with you, um, like new country, but Orville Peck is sort of alt country, and I, I really admire he has the guts to like just be him in, yeah. a, in a climate that doesn't really accept a lot of things about him. And so the fact that he's still like, you know, got his chest out and he's doing it, I, I, I respect that. So I think, and his music's brilliant. So before we find out Shane's recipe that I'm going to head into the kitchen to remake, I'm going to talk a little bit more about music. Tell us about your basement. <laughs> so my basement's become my new, my new stage, so a lot of online shows and performances, um, which has been interesting and different because when you finish a song, there's no applause. <laughs> so I just have to like insert applause into my head. Oh. It's just better for my self-esteem that way. <laughs> but it's been interesting because I've been playing um, further um, than I might have. So, for example, one of them was like um, in BC, you know, so I'm and I'm reaching actually larger audiences in some cases. Yeah. So it, it's been really, really great. It's been so a new experience. So, how does that work? Are you, are people just logging on to you doing a live show? It's usually a promoted uh, thing. We've been getting um, requests from um, different companies doing these live shows, so they promote it and we help promote it as well. And then people log on, they know it's, it's coming up, we advertise it and we do it. Um, I've got uh, one that I did a few weeks ago um, uh, for Simcoe Street Theatre doing um, like an interview and doing a few songs live 
and it's always kind of a rush because it's 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 taped and you know you gotta yeah. you just gotta do it right the first time so you know what's cool now with like you know this kind of new normal cyberspace is that sort of like we want to have a party and we get to see you live so we can have a party in our backyard log on to you and then have you play yeah so what recipe are you going to give us to try and make in the kitchen they're called ploys and it was my grandmother um, my, my father's mother and she had 14 kids and uh, wow. so this is a, a, a traditional Acadian um, dish and it's sort of the best way to describe it it's in between like a pancake and a crumpet is the best way i could describe it okay. so it looks like a pancake so a recipe yeah. from grandma rose from new brunswick mm -hmm. it is ploys yeah okay so i'm gonna get to the kitchen after this commercial break but i am gonna be with an awesome chef who's gonna help me how to make them so i'm not on my own but i'm gonna follow your dad and grandma's recipe to a tea perfect so happy to see this because there, there's so many reasons why I love this recipe. Number one, it's Canadian, but uh, more than that, it's actually French Acadian. We never hear about Acadians, you get me? And it's something from, you know, East Coast that is interesting because how do you pronounce it in English? Like, the ploys. ploys. Ploys, right, ploys. And what does ploys mean or do we know? No. No, okay. So in French, it's actually ployer. Okay. And ployer means to fold. Oh. I love that name because it's literally what we're going to be doing uh, later on, right? So uh, it means to fold. And uh, the great thing about this recipe, um, it's uh, their twist of, of pancakes, which we love, right? That we okay. like to do and we like to do it from scratch if we can at home. So okay. here's a new way that you can do it with your kids tomorrow for breakfast. So get them in and it's like four or five ingredients, really simple. And then, yeah, it's delicious. But it's buckwheat. That's right. Yeah. He said, I remember Shane said that it was really important that we'd stay true to that recipe. Yeah. That's what his grandma used to make it. So give us here a little lesson. What's the difference, like making it with buckwheat? So buckwheat is, well, I'm assuming it's because they probably have a lot more over there and that's why they, they're using that compared to traditionally to like central West Canada. Um, it's, it's very healthy. It's very good for you. It's going to be a little bit more of a, I find it more like a nutty, but it's not. But uh, that's how I can best describe it for me when I taste it. Okay, so if you're watching us from the Maritimes, we'd love to know if you cook and bake a lot with buckwheat. Well, they actually, with this too, they even use it as bread. So oh. yeah, like they will even like even if you want to do it savory, they'll even add like a jam into it. Do you get me? Like you follow me? It's so, really interesting. Like when you were saying it to me, that's why I was like, is it a crumpet? So it's kinda it's 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 kinda like a crepe meets pancake. Ingredients time. Ingredients time. So yes, again, this is something you want to make for breakfast tomorrow. And I, I'm pretty sure you have this in your pantry, except maybe the buckwheat, but I think it's worth to even just go to your local uh, bulk barn and just get like it was like it's like a dollar for like a pound. So what we have here is we have baking powder. We have salt, we have the buckwheat, we have all-purpose flour, we have um, hot water and room temperature okay. water. And then these two ingredients, which is maple syrup and some coconut and pistachio at the end, just a little at the end. I added that because I love that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but if you can help out, let's uh, incorporate all our ingredients. You don't have to do, you can do it by hand. Yeah, so you can just, yeah, add that in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then our other dry ones, yeah. So go ahead, our all-purpose. Yeah, and the baking powder, salt. All right, so let's just give that a dry, yeah, there we go, okay? And then we're gonna, so I'll help you. I'm gonna bring our room temperature water here like this, all right? So you can mix as we go. So we should be, right, like mixing slowly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I'm just incorporating the water slowly in here. I'm not dumping it in to give it a chance to absorb all the dry ingredients so it doesn't get that big lump, right? Good. 
Okay, and then we're gonna. And this add is where the home. kids can help, right? Absolutely, absolutely. The kids can come in. They'll, it's fine. It's something different. So we're gonna let that go for a few minutes, and then you will have our batter nice and thing where we're just gonna be able to just put it right on our cast iron, which Shane uh, also yes. said. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so tell us and tell me, everybody at home, I'd love for you to educate me. Why is it so important to use that? Well, you can. I mean, it's it's preferred. You don't have to. You can do it on any other pan that you have. All right. How's your arm? <laughs> I was just gonna ask you if I could take a break, actually. So, is this the consistency? Yeah, we're gonna we get, we're gonna, it's gonna get more, but yeah, so we're pretty much there. Okay, I know your arm's been getting a little. <laughs> this, I did a really good job. Oh look wow, at this look at that! Consistency. Beautiful. So, look at that. Okay, nice. so how long have we been doing this for? So it, it takes, it, honestly, it takes about five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes, and this is a serving for how many, chef? I would say you can serve four people for breakfast easily with um, with extras. So, oh yeah. wow, that's great! So yeah. this is mini size ployer. Ployer, yes, that's right. Mini size ployer. I called it ploys, but I'd love to know from our viewers uh, in the Maritimes, in the Atlantic part of Canada, like, do you call it ployer? Do you call it ploys? Yeah, that'd and be interesting. Chef Russell, since uh, parlez français. All right. So what's our next step after this? Okay, we like that. Okay, look at that, beautiful. Okay, so then if you have a ladle, you can, or if you have a spoon. We do, we're gonna have to take a quick commercial break for our final reveal. Are you cool with that? Yeah. We are back. It is time for our next step, mm -hmm. which is chef. Yes, it's time to cook our batter into our cast iron. So what I want the viewers to know is that the cast iron, it, it doesn't need any oil. Okay, so we're not adding anything in here. Okay, so it's literally just from the batter that's going to be going into the pan and that's going to cook. My kind and of then recipe. we want to get it nicely brown. So right here, I'm just using my, I'm just getting off all this other excess off from here. I love the fact that you're using a ladle because I find that that could be one cute portion into a perfect circle. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the goal. Okay, that's we can the hear the sizzle. Yeah. So really important, like you taught us, to make sure that it's hot. Yeah. Okay. And then we're gonna let that be, and then we're gonna do some more. So we have three perfect circles that I helped you make yeah. here for the ployer. Yeah. So how long does it cook each side? So it's about uh, three to four minutes per side. Take a look. Let's give it a give flip. Give it a chef flip. Ooh, oh, nice, I like it. I like nice, it. Nice. So look, speaking of cast iron, we have to tell everybody at home what you brought for us to plate it. So I brought some of my little cast iron minis, but we're going to use them as plates to, 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 to taste. This is awesome. And this is su paying such homage to Shane because he was just so uh you know he was very careful to stay close to his grandmother's recipe right, right. i know that he said you know what use cast iron all the way and we did oh, it for you yeah I can't wait. <clears throat> so is the shane sing a song like what did he perform anything i got a little bit of a serenade oh i can't believe you missed the first part yeah okay yeah, so yeah. uh he has a wonderful new track out and of course we can catch him he's got his tracks all over the internet catch him on youtube on spotify and we'll have all his links of course throughout the show right such a talented music musician he writes and performs all his own songs wow. lyrics and music yeah wow. wonderful okay chef are we ready we are okay we are. So. smell that okay there oh my go. god, these are so cute. Ployer for one, ployer for two. You know, it looks, it reminds me of when I was growing up eating crumpets. <laughs> okay, so how do we garnish this now? All right, so it's uh, a little maple syrup, so I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit here. Keeping it Canadian Keeping with the maple syrup. Keeping it Canadian, syrup. yeah, yeah. And again, molasses is another thing that they use as well that I've noticed. Um, and again, like you said, there's nothing wrong throwing on some you know, whipped cream. <laughs> It's Ployer. Thank you very much, Shane Cloutier. Oh, yes. Thank you, Eric Alper, as well. Okay, dig in. Bon appétit. Bon appétit. If you want me to be happy, you might just have to wait.
There's like a, a guitar <laughs> solo part that wasn't going to happen with just me. You have to give them in-person applause because yeah, you don't get them anymore. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I don't even know how to take that. Yep. Action. All right, so we'll do the Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. I'll just hold it like this. I've yeah. actually never held a guitar, you know? Really? Yeah. Pretend like you just pretend you're rocking out. Like just do like some, me? Yeah, just strum oh, it. Just strum it. Still on my character. Okay, so try like this. Yep. Why don't you tell me what to do? I'll tell you what. You can put your fingers here. Okay. E minor. Okay. And then you just you just strum. My health? Yep. Yep. No, all the way across. All the way across. You make it look so easy when you're performing. <laughs> just got to, just some practice. That's it. How long have you been playing guitar? Oh, I guess. 30 years. Oh, okay. That's yeah. your advantage. And how did you learn? Uh, actually, I got tricked into it. My, my mother put me in guitar lessons and I didn't practice for a couple months. And then she said, I guess you just don't have any musical talent. She was doing like... <laughs> reverse psychology? Yeah, reverse psychology. I mean, it worked. Oh. Embarrassingly still works. Part two, the reveal. Take one. No. no. I think this is going to be our good guy. Yeah. Okay, get rid of that. <laughs> I'm gonna add some square on the bottom? Yeah, I said not to. So that's that's the key to not burning it? 